is part uh, C of section 3.2. Um, this is one of our theorems. Uh, we've not gone through um, a proof of a theorem, and we're going to take a look at this one. Um, I will not be expecting you to uh, do any proofs on tests or quizzes, but I think every now and then it's good to see that these uh, proofs are not that difficult. Um, we do need some prior knowledge uh, of trig. Uh, if you look in the front cover of your textbook, you have a lot of uh, trig identities. And so some prior knowledge that we need for this is um, prior knowledge, there we go. Uh, the prior knowledge that we need is what do we do with the sign of um, of alpha plus theta. How do we, what do we deal with? How do we deal with the uh, the sine of the sum of two angles? And that is uh, defined in, as the sine of alpha cosine theta uh, plus the cosine alpha sine theta. So just kind of keep that in mind. That is just some stuff we need to know. Uh, and again, you can get all these uh, in the front cover of your textbook. Okay, we want to find what is the sine, uh, the derivative of the sine x. So the, um, as you know from geometry, what we do is start on one side of the uh, theorem, and we work our way, and this is going to be analytically work our way until we can get to the uh, to the right side. So we're going to look at um, the derivative of sine x as the limit. Here's our good old friend of the limit definition. Delta x approaches 0. And um, just a reminder, this is going to be f of x plus uh, delta x. So this would be uh, the sine of uh, x plus delta x minus f of x. So minus the sine of x, all of it divided by delta x. If we look at this, and again we're going to use now our prior knowledge on this, we would have uh, the limit as delta x approaches 0, and that is going to be, uh, this would be then the sine x cosine delta x plus cosine x sine x minus sine x, all of it divided by delta x. Um, next line. Um, I really can take, you know, erase these brackets at this point. Uh, I don't need to worry about that. Um, let's see, this should be delta x in there. Um, the next thing then would be if I, uh, if we look, um, I've got two terms here with sine x, so um, I'm going to write this as limit as delta x approaches, approaches zero. And um, I'm going to write, um, let's see, this is going to be cosine x sine delta x. Um, I'm actually going to reorganize these two, and I'm going to make it as negative sine x plus sine x cosine delta x divided by delta x. Okay, so a little uh, commutative and associative property there um, equals the limit delta x approaches 0. Okay, and this is going to be cosine x sine delta x. Let's get that extra out of there. There we go. Um, I'm going to factor out um, a uh, negative sine x, and that's going to give me 1 minus cosine 
delta x divided by delta x. Now, where does that... Well, let's see. Um, at this point, um, remember what we did on an earlier problem. We said that uh, we have, if two fractions have the same denominator, we can add them. So I'm going to make this cosine x sine delta x divided by delta x um, minus, I'm going to write it this way, uh, sine x and then um, times 1 minus cosine delta x divide by delta x. Now you can verify that if I split this up, I, I could have had sine x and then the quantity uh, 1 minus cosine x, all of that, or this is equivalent to that, um, to that statement. Um, now, let's see what, what we have here. Okay, now we need to uh, look at this very carefully. Um, if we consider, if we consider this piece right here, okay, and then we consider this piece right here. We need to think about um, a theorem that we had back in uh, chapter 2. And let me just switch over to that section. And we'll see here. We have the limit as x goes to 0, sine x divided by x is 1. And the limit as x goes to 0, 1 minus cosine x divided by x goes to 0. And this is theorem 3.9. So if we use now those, um, those theorems, so we're going to use, let's put it over here, use uh, theorem 2.9 from uh, chapter 2. Uh, we would actually have... Um, now, this is going to be using direct substitution at this point because I'm going to actually take the limit, and so I have cosine x. I remember, we're taking delta x to 0, so cosine x is just a constant term, and we saw that the limit as sine x uh, divided by x go, and x goes to 0, but that is equal to 1, minus sine x, and here is the same item, only this one is going to 0. So our answer is cosine x. Now, what were we trying to prove? We're trying to prove that the derivative with respect to x of sine x is cosine x. And we have done just that. A little bit of associative and commutative work with some prior knowledge about the uh, sine of uh, the, the addition sum of two angles and uh, our use of theorem 2.9. Now we could do the same thing with uh, cosine x, and the derivative of cosine x is the opposite of sine x. You will want to know these two derivatives, and we're going to use them enough that you will have them memorized before uh, the end of, this, of the term. Okay, um, let's go on to our next problem. The derivative of the natural exponential function um, e to the x is simply e to the x. This is the easiest derivative of all. It is itself. Uh, we don't have to do any work for that. We're just going to, uh, to use that. Again, we could prove that, uh, but we're not going to go through that right now. Okay, so if we look then at the derivative of this function, uh, dy, the derivative of y with respect to x is um, we are going to take the derivative with respect to x of the 3 fourths e to the x plus the derivative with respect to x of 2 cosine x. Okay, so the derivative of 3 fourths e to the x, 3 fourths is just our multiplier, our coefficient. The derivative of e to the x, according to this theorem, is simply e to the x plus, here's our multiplier to our coefficient 2, and the derivative of cosine x. Now remember, we just went over that. The derivative of cosine is the opposite of sine. 
So this would be then the opposite of sine x. So our derivative could be written as um, 3 fourths e to the x minus 2 sine x. Now let's review one more time. What does this tell us? Kind of like my so what question. Just go back and review your definition of a derivative. This is a function. So this function, let me say this function's output is the slope of a line tangent to the curve. Now, which curve? You're right, f of x at a point. Which point? I don't know until I decide where on the curve I want the tangent. So x would be any of those points that we have on the curve. Okay, so let's look then at this problem. Determine the points, if any, at which the graph of y equals x plus sine x has a horizontal tangent line. Now we're going to restrict the domain to be um, 0, less than or equal to 0, less than 2 pi. Why? Because on the unit circle, that would be one complete rotation from start to finish. Okay. So we want to know where on this curve, this curve or this graph has a horizontal tangent line. Well, what do you know about a horizontal line? Yeah, slope is zero. So if I can find the derivative of this, set it equal to zero, well, I've got a good shot at finding out my answer. So the derivative of y with respect to x is the derivative with respect to x of the first term plus the derivative with respect to x of the second term. So we have, now this one, um, again, this is, um, Take the uh, exponent times the leading coefficient and then subtract 1 from the exponent. And so that would give us a 0. 1 minus 1 is 0, so simply 1. Plus, now again, um, this goes back to our theorem. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. So this would be plus cosine x. Because we have, we know that the horizontal, it's a horizontal tangent line, we're going to um, set it equal to zero. Um, so m equals zero, it means that zero equals one plus cosine x. That tells us that cosine x is equal to negative one. Now we need to go back and look at where on the unit circle do we have cosine equal to negative 1? Recall that every point on the unit circle has an input and an output, and that if you're dealing with, with uh, the trig functions, we have cosine theta and sine theta. Now this is on the unit circle. So that we need to know well, what are the, uh, the coordinates of each of these points. Uh, at this point, the coordinates would be 0, 1. At this point, we'd have the coordinates 0, negative 1. Here we have the coordinates 1, 0. And of course, over here, we have the coordinates negative 1, 0. So where in the unit circle, or where in the, you know, do we have, what, for what input or uh, value, and the input, of course, what angle, uh, is the cosine equal to negative 1, and so therefore, our angle is going to be at pi, because if it takes two pi ratings to go all the way around, we know that the angle that ends up terminal side here, this angle is pi. Okay, um, so it says determine the points at any of which the function has uh, a horizontal tangent line. Uh, so therefore, uh, at the input of pi and and so if we look at y equals pi plus sine pi uh, that implies 